children that we support, or maybe 200 children that we support through school. Um, we have uh, Edensfield, that is a health foundation that looks after people who are not able to look after themselves. So send children to India, send children to the United States, we send children to England, and we're trying to work with other people to build a first-class hospital in Nigeria because the amount of uh, what they call medical tourism, the amount of money Nigeria sends, uh, spends every year on medicine abroad South is humongous. Africa, India, Everywhere, America, you know, it's, Germany. It's, it's unbelievable. And guess what? You know, um, we spend money to send people abroad sometimes to see a Nigerian doctor. It's happened to us several <laughs> times. <laughs> you know, people that are trained in UI, that are trained in Luth, they are top doctors almost everywhere in the world, and we spend good money to send our people to see our people. So I'm saying to myself, why can't we not bring the environment that they're used to so that they can come back and do what we do, medical evangelism, where we bring doctors from the States and they go all over the place. So we're very concerned about the people. We're very concerned about the nation. We're concerned about what's going on in the North and what can we do to, first of all, bring peace in the North. You know, I grew up in a home where my aunties were Muslim. My uncle was Muslim, my mother was Christian, and we all grew up together. When it is time to go to Mecca, my mother writes a check and sends my aunties to Mecca, and so on and so forth. I don't see why we still cannot live together as brothers and sisters. We may have different faiths and different beliefs, but we must live together. I went to King's College. Sitting next to me was Lamido Sanusi, a Muslim. On the other side is a Catholic. On the next side is somebody from the South-South. We all grew up as brothers, one nation, one country, and we must bring that back to Nigeria, okay? And that's what we're trying to do in Trinity House, peace. And then, of course, to support our Christian brothers in the north and to give them help and encouragement is going to be just fine. Yeah, talking about your concerns and how you've been able to work around it and support the community. You know, there's one job in the world that there's no clear court, supposedly, as to whether it's a crime or it shouldn't be, and that's, you know, uh, sex work. We call them sex workers. Um, I do not want to use the popular word. Now, I, are there steps are there? Do you have plans, you know, to reduce commercial sex workers in the country? Absolutely. We have an NGO called Lydia Grace. Now, that's their essential focus, to go and get these ladies, rehabilitate them, sometimes reunite them with their families. Just yesterday, one of the ladies gave birth to a baby that we're also looking after. And sometime this month on the 31st, we're having a symposia with the Lagos State Government to try and address these issues and to see how we can change the thinking of people. So what we do is we go to where they are, where they practice their trade. We try and get them out of there. We rehabilitate them, put them in a home. We have about one or two homes we work with and we're building one ourselves uh, where we can have them. We teach them a new skill, send them to school, educate them, and then reintegrate them back into society. Have you ever had any other man's story, like someone who does not want to be rehabilitated? Well, we've had stories of people coming and running away, and then sometimes we track them, we chase them, we get them and get them back, and so on and so forth. We've had people who said, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I am, but we keep talking to them. To, to bring them out. It's uh, both spiritual and it's physical and it's economic. And these are people from the... Which one do you think is more, spiritual or economic? Well, it starts with economics. You know, people are desperate. They can't go to school. Their parents can't help them and so on and so forth. And uh, sometimes people are lured into these things. You know, you go back to the village. You say, come to Lagos and work for me as a house girl. Before you know it, you, they throw you into some hotel or somewhere or the other and you have no option, you know, things are really tough for the uh, on, underprivileged in Nigeria. And this is really where our focus is, to help the underprivileged. We have about three or four outreaches in different underprivileged areas where we go and meet them. We, we teach them the word, we feed them, we educate them, we send their children to school, we give them uh, clothes and medication. And at least once a month, we feed about a thousand people all over Lagos, wherever we can find them. And we also try to um, give them a hope in life. People need a hope in life. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria is such a great and blessed country that we must create an atmosphere where everybody can be free. 
You know, we're here to support government, to make sure government does its role. You know, one of the things that uh, people have not been doing is to support government or challenge government from a positive point of view, okay? How can we help you do things better? And where you're not doing things right, these are the things we think, and how can we support you? So we have something called the Community Impact Group that is looking at our community, our local area, as a template. What can we do? What roads can we build? What boreholes can we provide? How can we send people to school? We have an NGO that looks into educational research. Initially, we thought the problem was infrastructure. Then we realized that the problems are teachers, okay? You don't have enough motivated, qualified, well-trained teachers to support education. So we are now doing a research with the Lagos State Government to see how we can better teach teachers and better empower them. Then we want to partner with other foundations to provide infrastructure. Because no matter how good the infrastructure is, if the teacher yeah, is not quality. competent, mm -hmm. yes. then you, you, you're wasting your time. Okay. So these are all the things. We've been doing a lot of work. And mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping that when we can get this community impact template, then we can help to transform local governments from local government to local government. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, Olu Victor Oinloe here is not only a member of the anniversary committee, he's also involved in community impact group. What's your experience been like? Because I went to a church not too long ago where they do this community work thing. And um, it's hard work. It's not an easy thing when you wake up on a Sunday morning and you're going around, you're talking to drug abusers and drug users and prostitutes and all kinds of human beings that ordinarily you really may not want to relate with. But if you have to do it on a weekly basis, what's it like for you? I would say um, it's a pleasant experience because uh, you you really need uh, you really need to have passion for it before uh, you can give it all that you have. And our uh, the mantra of our pastor is everywhere he went, he was doing good. Uh, that's um, that's in the book of Acts. Uh, where, wherever Jesus went, he was doing good. So that's the idea behind this community impact group. We want to do good to as many people as possible. So we are committed to not just the, the, the members of our church, but every member within the community, the destitute, the drug addict, the sex worker, and the uh, people living uh, on the street. So we identify where they live, we go there, we try and, you know, uh, clean them up, we feed them on a weekly basis, we provide uh, uh, clothing for them, we, we provide uh, educational services, we, we are looking at providing a borehole for them and um, giving them medical and uh, medications. So once in a month, we have... Are there doctors who are members of the church who also go out with you? Yes, we have different kind of professionals. We have doctors, we have nurses, we have uh, uh, teachers, we have uh, counselors, people that when we bring them in, people that we talk to them and um, direct them and guide them uh, according to uh, what we want to be in life. It's so good to know that uh, there's, there's a lot to be grateful for. So all of this account that you've given shows that uh, tomorrow is going to be great, great right? Yeah. So let good. me ask Pastor Igudalo. Mm -hmm. Um, what, where, and what time is it starting tomorrow? Tomorrow we start at nine. That's a typical service time. We expect it to be a two, two and a half hour service, uh, full of praise and worship. We're hoping that uh, the children can present something. The adults will present something. Uh, we're going to have a little documentary of uh, what we've done so far, the journey so far, and um, it's a lot of worship, you know. Should I ask about the music? Because some of us got to <laughs> Look out for the time to dance and the, the, the quality music, of the music. The music yeah. is great. Uh, God has blessed us. We have a very good team, a very good band. Okay. Uh, our music leader is Tosin Alao, and uh, he's done an excellent job. And um, we try to allow people to be what people should be, to express themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have an extremely talented band. We play Fuji, we play gospel, we play uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can, you can find your own space. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming.
Trinity House anniversary, obviously from their accounts, is going to be fantastic. And um, they have, you've all been invited for the anniversary.